there's a portion for our dairy, which is, uh, should be low fat. It should be low fat at this point. We should not be doing full cream uh, milk anymore. And then if you see that tiny piece in the middle, it talks about foods and drinks high in fat and sugar. Personally, I would just close up that little triangle and make it non-existent. Because for us now, our bodies do not need Coke. We do not need Fanta. We do not need Chivita. We do not need Mortina. All we need is water or healthy uh, extracts from any of the fruits that we like. So if you like pineapple, blend your pineapple and have your pineapple juice. If you like watermelon, blend your watermelon and have pineapple uh, watermelon juice, as opposed to going to buy pineapple in a, in a, in a bottle or pineapple in a, cart, in a carton, which we don't know what they've added to it. So our goal is to reduce any processed thing that is coming into our body. And some, sometimes I like to tell my, my patients that see all these extras as little bits of poison that can cause damage to the body. And when you see some, if you see poison, you definitely you not want to take poison. So you need to change your view of what those things are because they are not putting any value in your body. And so they are not, or they should not be put in your body. However, we substitute with other things that can uh, optimize our health. And we find out that when we take less sugar, our body craves less sugar. So you won't be having all the unnecessary cravings by wanting to, after a bottle of Coke, you might want to take one for four for one biscuit here and there. The less sugar you take in, the less cravings you have, and you tend to eat more healthy things. So this should be our goal, to have a balanced uh, eat well plate uh, that we indulge in every day. You should eat your three meals a day. Portion is what is important. You can wake up and have a good breakfast of fruits, oatmeal, and a good two glasses of water. Some people like warm water now, it's okay, it's well advocated. Your lunch can be a small salad. So when I say salad, some people say, is it cucumber and carrot? No, our furry roll is salad. Our tete is salad because you put your fish inside, you put your iru, and that's a fantastic meal with your grilled fish or your boiled fish by the side. And a small portion of either oats or even small semo, but the important thing is portion control. Dinner is always the, uh, is, should be the smallest meal and should be eaten preferably before 7 p.m. So that you give you time to digest and do what is supposed to in the body. If you eat too late, in itself can present you with um, discomfort with your digestion. Some people may even have heartburn and then you know, that's when we complain of, I'm not able to sleep well at night because there's a lot of indigestion going on and there's discomfort. So at this point, we also want to counsel you to choose meat that is lean. What is lean meat? Um, meat that's like chicken, uh, turkey, um, things that have very little fat around them. And unfortunately, red meat is not part of this list. So if we are still eating red meat, my counsel today will be to uh, stop red meat, stop all forms of inside um, innards. So those we say, we say um, things like shaki and uh, and all these um, um, intestines, all of them are very high in fats. And those of that, all of that keys into your cholesterol. And we know that high cholesterol keys into hypertension ultimately. So we begin to uh, we need to begin to let go of a lot of things that we're initially uh, into and begin to change our dietary picture. Um, as regard eggs, we also counsel that if you must eat egg, maybe once or twice a week, and if you're eating it, you must remove the yolk part of the egg uh, because of, again, high cholesterol. There should be more emphasis on beans, uh, proteins, and healthy nuts, because not all nuts that are healthy, but things like cashew, uh, pistachio, those are more healthy nuts as opposed to the ground nuts uh, that we all find uh, easily available. That is also high cholesterol. Again, I've talked about portion control. So let's eat small portions, okay? Just small portions, nothing too large. If you want to get full, get full on this, the vegetable aspect or fruit aspect, okay? Snacks. Okay, in moderation, but again, I would say 
do away with them. Your body can do without it. If you must snack, snack on a carrot, cucumber. They are cheap, they are easily available. And if you make sure they're in the house, they are right within your grasp when you require it. And then avoid sodas and sugar enhanced drinks that we have mentioned earlier. Um, some people like a vegetarian lifestyle, which is okay. It has also been promoted for a healthy lifestyle and for weight loss. Uh, but we also have to be careful for some vegetarian diets are lacking in some vitamins and minerals. So even if you want to do a vegetarian diet, please also always check with your doctor to be sure that you're not lacking in uh, some nutrition. Like um, people with vegetarian diets are very low in folic acid because they're not eating meat. So you need to check as well that you are not at risk of that. So this is our healthy food, nine tips. Set yourself up for su success. What does that mean? Put the right things in your house. Put the right things in your house. When you're going shopping, buy, be deliberate about your shopping. Buy the necessary, the fruits, the vegetables. So you say, oh, there's nothing in the house, Jerry, let me eat it back. Oh, there's nothing in the house, let me eat right. If you make sure that you have bought everything in the house so that even when you have your cravings and you say, okay, just put a slice of watermelon for you, you'll be surprised that that craving disappears. So it's not just what you eat, it's how you eat. So we talked about eating at the right time, avoid eating late. Then enjoy, uh, add calcium for strong bones. So we're talking about low fat milk. Some, uh, some that enjoy um, yogurt can buy Greek yogurt. It's a good source of calcium. It will help build up strong bones. Limit sugar and salt. Limit sugar and salt. Please, once food has been cooked, do not add salt to it. A lot of our men like to do that. Please avoid adding salt to food after it has been cooked. And then of course, we should focus more on our protein intake from the healthy forms of meat. So um, the final thing would be drink more water. We need to drink, a lot of people say, I drink water now, doctor, I'm drinking water. But when you investigate further, we find out we're not actually drinking water. So how much water should I be drinking? If you know what the big Eva looks like, that's about 1.5 liters. You are encouraged to take at least two of that every day. You may not necessarily take it at a sitting. However, you can stagger it over the day. So two big Eva water is equivalent to four small bottles of 75 CL. So you can take maybe two 75 CL in the morning or one, two in the afternoon, one at night. You're putting your three liters of water recommended in for the day, but it must be a deliberate action and it must be a conscious thing. So um, find, make sure that when they are giving you a meal, make sure that the, the water is there and drink the, the whole bottle of water. I, I do know that the first time you try it, it may be a bit challenging, but by the time the body adapts to it, it will um, become quite easy and you actually uh, desire to drink a lot of water. It's very good for moving bowel for people that have constipation if you drink more your bowel movements are easier you you sweat easily you pass your urine and you find out your urine is actually white so that's for people that say oh my urine is yellow i must have malaria if you drink enough water your urine will not be yellow and you will see that it is actually not uh, malaria so drinking a lot of water helps the kidney to flush out all the toxins that we've been keeping in and then for us women it helps our skin glow because you have taken out all the toxins from it. So when you drink water, the body flows from the inside out. So water is absolutely necessary for uh, body functioning. And then our mental health. Mental health also keys into the fact that we're now not seeing everybody, a lot of people like before. Some people now that they're retired, they just want to have a quiet uh, time, you know, they want to have less interfa interface with too many people but at this point it's also important to have a network of friends you don't have to have a large one but have a strong social support people that you talk with share ideas people that you interact with even now on whatsapp video and on zoom so people that you you are able to talk with because in itself talking interacting is a social habit that must not be stopped irrespective of covid and because when we talk with other people you see how you feel at the end of a discussion especially if someone that you've had a wholesome 
healthy discussion with you feel better at the end of the day you feel uh re-energized and all that so ensure that you still have a network of friends we can still be part of church by zoom so you can still be a member of the church you can still be an elder in the church you can still have some interactions in in various uh dimensions so it's necessary for our mental health to still maintain interactions with other people so take time to do something that you haven't had time to do in the past get a hobby do a sport write a book i know a lot of people are I've had a lot of experiences in life. This is time to put pen to paper, right? Because the more you do something with your brain, the younger your brain feels, the more challenge it is. And it, it keeps you staying younger uh, for longer. So, you know, I find a lot of people that don't know how to use programs on the computer. This is the time to learn, you know? So it's the time to actually do things that can improve your overall mental state and um, ultimately, you know, improve your better outlook in life. Social health, like we said, develop your spirituality, attend regular services online because we're still advocating um, that you don't go to church for well, the people above 60 and 70 for now. We're still encouraging that you church online or you do your mosque uh, services online. But even if you have to go to the mosque or the church, you must ensure that you social distance appropriately um, so that you are safe. And then, of course, this is for me as a personal thing. Forgive. Letting go of grudges has surprising health benefits. Forgiveness will reduce anxiety, lower blood pressure, and help you breathe more easily. And these benefits tend to increase as you get older. So if there are things that people have done in the past, the truth is people will always offend, will always offend each other. But um, forgiveness not only helps you, uh, it mostly helps you as opposed to helping the other person and it helps you to be more uh, healthy overall and helps your mental health. And then you manage stresses, whatever the stress is, whichever way they come. Stresses will come, but you just uh, develop a positive outlook to uh, addressing any stressful um, stimulus that comes in your direction. And then we just talk about personal hygiene. So we are going out every day. Still maintain your hygiene. Look good. Because when you look good, you're confident. You have a good, um, you have a good outlook. So avoid um, just staying at home, not doing anything. Move, get up like you normally do. Take your bath. Watch the news. Share information with people, you know. And just maintain a good personal hygiene. So by way of trying to round up, it's not too much. I, I just want us to talk a bit about COVID-19. Um, I know a lot of us have heard a lot in jingles and the state government has done so well to inform uh, people in all spheres of life, um, but it's never too much to talk about the COVID-19 protocols. Uh, our aim is to protect ourselves subject to a vaccine. Uh, for now, I know that discussions about vaccines in the pipeline. Uh, so before it comes, what we have is infection prevention control. And that is the major strategy to uh, protecting ourselves. So we know that coronavirus was first reported in China. And um, we know the symptoms are very similar to cough, cold, cutter. So, you know, and some people will complain of weakness, tiredness. Some people complain of stooling, vomiting. Some people complain that I can't smell, I can't taste. These are the basic symptoms that you present with, with uh, COVID. And there are still a lot of population, because I feel we're blessed in Nigeria. A large population of people uh, do not even have any symptoms. As much as the blessing, it is not also a very good thing because that means people are spreading the virus without realizing it. So we always have to be at alert. We always have to protect ourselves. So our recommendations regarding COVID, adequate physical distancing at all times at all times. It doesn't mean that you're angry with the next person. It doesn't mean that you, you are being um, mean. It just means that you're protecting yourself and that other person. Um, hand hygiene, good ventilation. If so if you must be in a space with somebody, there must be proper ventilation across the room. Hand hygiene is very important, which just means hand washing, and I'll take you through those steps. Your must your use of your mask must be at all times when you are in large gatherings uh, or when you are with people that you are not sure of their status. And then your respiratory hygiene. And then 
So yes, this is our hand washing slide. And it talks about hand washing can be with soap and water. Or if you have your sanitizer, you can use that. If you are using your hand wash, you must follow all these seven steps of hand washing. And that is palm to palm, back of hand, in between fingers, your knuckles, your thumbs, your fingertips, and your wrists. And if you look at the next slide, this is just showing us picturally what we're expected to do. So if you, you start first by wetting your hands with water, you apply enough soap on, the, on your hands in the middle of your palm, and then you do your palm to palm, your palm to palm, that just means your two surfaces together. And then you turn to the back of your hands and then you wash it. So what you do for one, you do for the other. And then you go in between the spaces of your fingers to get any of the bacteria or whatever viruses may be in there. And after you do that, you touch your knuckles, you touch your knuckles, and then you go to your thumb. And then we cannot forget our fingertips, which we rub into the palm of our hand and then you may wash your wrist and then you dry. Mm -hmm. Once you do these seven steps, it is assumed that your hands are safe and that they are free of any form of organism, whether it's a virus or a bacteria. And once your hands are that safe, you don't want to be touching the tap to close it again. So you use tissue to close the tap. And touching anything. This is a period where you want to avoid touching things too much. Door handles, you have to be very careful. Uh, light switches, you have to be very careful. When you even enter your car, you also have to be careful because we don't know how many other people have touched all those spaces before you. So once you're outside of your home, ensure that your hands are clean either with your sanitizer or your hand washing uh, liquid. And then you avoid touching your mouth your eyes and your nose throughout the time that you're outside of your home as much as possible. And the minute you get back home, you wash your hands, get them safe again before you're able to eat or before you're able to say, let me rub my eyes or put something in my mouth. So hand hygiene is a very, very important skill. Um, again, I believe that the slides will be shared with you. However, if you don't have the slides, this picture is on WHO platform and it's easily accessible and available you can place in the home to remind yourself about the seven steps of washing your hands, which is very, very vital. Um, and then the use of masks. So I always put this because, yes, use of masks. Huh? I always put this because I know that if we see someone coming with that kind of sneeze in our direction, our first reaction is to run away or move our face. And unfortunately, this is what comes out of anybody that's coughing or sneezing, even some people when they are talking. And this lends to the importance of wearing our mask at all times. And our mask must not only be worn on our chin, as you can see on that mask, but we want to cover our face and our mouth. And that is the only way we get adequate protection at all times. So everyone, according to the state government mandate now, everyone should be wearing face masks. And you can wear from your N95, if you have economic viability to buy that, it's a bit expensive. and. It, uh, is really preferred uh, workers managing COVID patients. Or well, your medical masks are easily available now and they are much cheaper. One medical mask is now, um, I believe it's about 100, 200 naira. This is a typical medical mask, this is mine. And this one is black, but many of them may come in different colors, blue, pink, yellow, just depending. The important thing is that when you're wearing your mask, next slide please. When you the colored part of the mask must be out. The colored part of the mask must be outward. So I see a lot of people turning this white part inside. That is not the ideal. We expect that if it's a blue mask you have, we must see the blue color outside. If it's a pink mask, we must see that color outside. That is if you are using a medical. Some people prefer to use a cloth mask. Whichever one is convenient for you. The key thing is your nose and your mouth must be adequately protected. Next slide, please. So we wear our masks in that fashion, colored side out. Mm -hmm. 
Mm. And next slide in. Next slide, please. Please avoid wearing your mask on your nose. Do not pull it down under your chin. Uh, so many of our children not like to wear their mask on their forehead for whatever reason. I think it's a fun thing for them. Please don't dangle your mask by your ear and avoid touching your mask because what you're actually touching is another person's secretions, another person's cough or cata or saliva on the front of your mask. So what you have done again is contaminated your hand. So if by chance you touch it, because we're human and we, there's a possibility that you may touch your mask, kindly use your hand sanitizer immediately after you have touched your mask. And that means yes. please walk around with your hand sanitizer, small mobile ones that we kept in your pocket or in your handbag, um, depending. Or you can keep in your office or in your home when people come and visit, you make sure that you sanitizer before touching anything in your home. And then when we are coughing or we're sneezing, please cough into our elbows. Uh, let us teach our members of our household as well. Either <clears throat> into a tissue and discard, or we do that into our elbow. Like the picture says, next slide now. Used tissues must be thrown in the waste bin and not reused. And once you have used the tissue mm -hmm. from the sneeze, you must perform your hand hygiene. That means you what? wash your hands again, or you use your sanitizer. Okay, so we can see there that you must cover your cough in your elbow, okay? And not with your hand. It is not advised to do so. So we're just winding up with our cleaning and disinfection. Um, our homes, once we are home now, we must supervise the cleaning and disinfection of our homes. And we say cleaning is with soap and water, but when we want to disinfect, we we'll get our hypo or jig and mix it in, uh, uh, in the consistency of one cup of hypo to nine cups of, uh, to six cups of jig, uh, to six cups of water, pardon me. Again, when we're mixing our jig or hypo for disinfection of our homes, um, we take one serving of hypo to six commiserate servings of water. So we say it's a one to six uh, ratio. And this consistency will give us a high, um, high volume of um, reagent that is able to clean our surfaces and keep them safe. So if I tell someone came into your home that has the virus, which is not my hope, um, once you're able to clean all your surfaces, clean your door handles, clean your light switches as this person is doing, clean your chair handles, anything that you think has a potential to uh, house any virus or bacteria. That actually any form of uh, bacteria or viral load and keep your environment safe. So as much as we're keeping our hands safe, we also have to keep our environment safe. This is part of uh, COVID safety protocols. So to summarize, we must live a balanced, we must, for our healthy living, we must avoid stress in any form. You've worked hard. You've had to deal with a lot of stresses from civil servants, from the service. Now is the time to avoid stress, manage stress, because stress will come, but how you manage it is what is important. And uh, what you cannot, if you cannot change it, then you, you, you can't kill yourself over it. Just find a way to manage it and resolve that challenge as best as possible. Balanced diet is very key. Get enough sleep. Enough sleep is five to six hours every day. But if you're able to get five hours, fantastic. Drink plenty of water, at least three liters of water every day. Regular exercise, and then reduce your weight by balancing your diet. And my addition to that is maintain your COVID uh, protocols, which is your hand washing, your wearing of your mask and your cleaning your environment very well. So in closing, eat well, move daily, hydrate often, sleep a lot, love your body and repeat that every day for good life. Oh, and um, okay. five keys to happy life, be grateful, accept, be non-judgmental, Love yourself because you work hard. So love yourself and have joy and surrender to God's perfect will. 
And the final thing is we cannot stop aging, but we can be aware of it. We can embrace it and adopt positive lifestyle choices to make us much better than uh, we ever were. So I welcome you to the beginning of your new season, your great season, and I know that you flourish and you do exceedingly well. Thank you very much for listening to me today and thank you very much for giving me your time. Uh, I will be glad to take any questions now. Thank you very much, Dr. Mrs. Omotolani Uyemi Uni. That was a very, very educative and informative presentation. Uh, let's, let's put our hands together for Dr. Mrs. Oni. Thank you so much, thank you so much. So we will be, we are open to questions and answers now. So if you have any question, feel very free. I think I saw a question on the chat. Let me just read that out. That person said, prostate cancer. My question is this, is all men open to having the said ailment or a particular set of men above 40 years? Please enlighten more on this. Okay, so that is a very wonderful question. And um, yeah, so to start off, the risk factors for prostate cancer include family history, lifestyle, diet. Now, most men of African or let me say African origin are predisposed to prostate cancer. The same way most women of African origin are predisposed to uh, uterine fibroids. Prostate cancer is one of the, is common in, in the black race. So yes, most men are at risk of it, but not all men will have it. Now, we identify who we have it and who will not. It is our screening exercises. And the first thing we do as screening is ask for your family history. If you have had a father or a grandfather that had prostate issues at any time, yes, that person is at risk of having prostate issues as well. And the unfortunate thing is if there's a family history, your, that person's presentation may actually be earlier. So your responsibility to yourself is to screen from the time you are 45. If you have a family history, you need to start screening for your prostate. That means you go to your doctor and they will check, they do an examination. It's not a very comfortable examination, but they will do a rectal examination to look at the size of your, of your prostate. And they will follow that up with a blood test, which is to screen for a PSA, that is a prostate specific antigen. And the level of it will let us know, yes, you have an enlargement of your prostate, or no, you don't have an enlargement of your prostate. Now, if the, enlarge, if the PSA is significantly high, they now go further and request for scan um, of your prostate, you know, a, a, a ultrasound scan or a uh, CT scan, depending on whatever that person presents with. So to answer your question, most men are at risk, but not all men will present with it. But your job for yourself is to screen for it so that you know whether you are at risk or you're not at risk. I hope that was helpful. Thank you, Ma. Any more questions? Please let's come up with our questions now. Questions? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Ma. Hello, Ma. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Mrs. Well Peter done, Ma. For all... Yes, Ma. How are you, Ma? Very well, thank you. Thank you for the privilege accorded me to be a partaker of this lecture. I appreciate. But my own is not a question, it is to ask whether we can get the full slide of this, everything that the moderator has done yes, through you our get, email. You will get it. Thank you very much. Even on WhatsApp. Thank you, Ma. Okay, Ma. Thank you. Right. God bless you. And you too. Keep it up. Thank you. I appreciate you and thank God for Lagos State. 
more grace in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Okay, somebody is saying, can we have this for our reference? Yes, why not? We'll get it. We'll get the slides. It seems we don't have any questions. Nobody is coming up with any questions. Uh, as a way of conclusion from my own hand, at least from what I can you know, summarize from everything, uh, number one, that aging is just part of life and it is progressive. It doesn't happen overnight. And uh, from everything we have had, I believe we have a better understanding of our bodies now. When we begin to see certain things, we know exactly what to do. But certain things we not show, except to go for a medical checkup. And if you go back to the slides, you know, we've been advised on uh, different tests that we can do to ensure that we know what is going on with our bodies because early detection we aid treatment. Uh, I had something like, you should know your blood sugar number, you should know your blood pressure number, you should know your cholesterol number. Very, very important. And uh, the lifestyle solutions, exercise, uh, which has to be moderate because of our ages. Diet, our diet is very important. Let's go back to that slide and uh, you know, take the advices. Let's take the advices. Uh, I'm particularly interested about that exercise. When you take advantage of it, it says you release uh, endorphin. Am I correct, doctor? <laughs> And that makes you to be happy. It makes you to be happy. You know, you are happier. I think we need, in retirement, we need to be happier. We need to have people we exercise with and uh, we need to have that, that, that joy. And uh, in respect of uh, COVID-19, you know, we have a lot of new normal now. So please, let's ensure that we obey all the uh COVID-19 protocols, the washing of our hands, using of our masks, ensuring that we disinfect our houses, we clean up all the time. And as we do so, I know we will keep healthy, we will keep safe. So I want to use this opportunity to thank everybody for you know being part of this program. It's one thing to call for this program. And it's another thing for people to be interested in joining. So I, I'm grateful for those of us that have joined. Uh, let me find out. I'm not sure if the PS is still, yes. is still on. Maybe we have one or two things to tell us before we finally close. PS, please. I think he's not, he's no more on. He must oh, have sorry, left. I don't know. Okay. No, yes. Hello. We want to. You are welcome on board, sir. Once again, we are about rounding up. We don't know whether you have one or two things to tell us <laughs> and to close the program for us. Thank you, sir. Uh, I don't have to. I appreciate the uh, doctor who has uh, did us this morning. It's a good meal. As he has suggested that we have to take good meals. She herself has done that with the lecture. I really enjoyed it because I followed. And I, I know I've picked some lessons where I need to adjust so that I can be very healthy. And I want to believe that other participants too will take advantage of this lecture to ensure that uh, 
the key into it and do the needful to remain healthy. So I want to appreciate our doctor. Thank you very much for doing justice to that topic. And all those who are on with us, uh, thank you for your patience. And I believe you must have gained one thing or the other. Is we going to have more of this? Also in some other fields. But then uh, we are not Sorry, Mr. So I uh, just want to uh, encourage us. Please, let's, let's, let's also inform our other colleagues to also benefit from uh, such programs we are putting up. If we don't have reasonable number of participants, it may also not be encouraging us to even do more. So I want to, I want to appeal to us to let's try and endeavor to bring other people on board so that uh, we see that all our efforts in ensuring the healthy living for our retirees and in the, some other aspects is not in vain. So thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate the department, the director, for service department for your relentless efforts in ensuring this come to <coughs> come to effect. So thank you very much and your team. God bless you all. So on this note, uh, and on behalf of the head of service, I say thank you while we draw this to a close. You are all blessed. Thank you very mm -hmm. much, sir. And God thank bless you, sir. So thank you so much. We have come to the end of the program. Thank you all for joining, for connecting. Like the PS said, uh, we will have more programs, even for this month. We will ensure that you are communicated. Please make sure you inform others to join. So thank you and bye-bye. Thank you, doctor. Bye-bye.